Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 23rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, last week we had the Oracle Critical Patch update and I noted that there was a new easy exploitable WebLogic vulnerability that was addressed with that update. We do have an exploit public now for this vulnerability that's CVE 2018-2893 and yes this vulnerability is already exploited in the wild. So time is up, you better already have your systems patched. Assure that the system hasn't already been compromised if you find a system that has not yet been patched. Now the one exploit we have seen being used so far does appear to install a back door. Haven't had really a chance to look at it into too much depth. So it's not just the crypto miners, but they're probably going around already. Just haven't really seen a specific one yet. And James Walker of Portsmaker noted in a blog post that the most recent version of Microsoft Edge apparently no longer blocks cross-site scripting by default. Starting with Internet Explorer 8, which I believe was released 2008, Microsoft introduced this feature, which is a very simple reflective cross-site scripting filter. Essentially, it looks at scripts that you're sending to the server and then obfuscates them if they come back at the browser. The feature itself had some critics. Uh, for example, there were some bypass methods, of course, and it sometimes ran into false positives. But overall, it did provide a somewhat meaningful protection against many sort of common cross-site scripting attacks. So it's a little bit odd that it would all of a sudden no longer be working. I haven't had a chance to test it myself yet. And at this point, I haven't seen an official response from Microsoft, whether this was intentional or whether this was a bug. In general, of course, you should never rely on these browser protections. Instead, it's always important that you encode your output correctly to prevent cross-site scripting. But uh, like I said, it is nice to have an additional layer of protection in the browser. A more modern and more complete protection from cross-site scripting, of course, is provided by content security policy in modern browsers. But then again, they are quite difficult to configure. So nothing as simple as this old in Explorer 8 protection. And Intel released an update for its Intel management engine. This particular update does address three vulnerabilities. The highest has a CVSS score of 8.1 one and it's a buffer overflow in the HTTP handler. No real word exactly on how it's being exploited or exploitable. Intel calls it an elevation of privilege vulnerability, which would indicate that you already need to have some kind of authenticated access to the system. Security and privacy often collide and the latest example is the use of TLS version 1.2 client certificates. Client certificates, of course, are used to authenticate the user and up to TLS 1.2, those client certificates are transmitted in the clear. Now, typically client certificates aren't really used all that much. Well, until you then start using, for example, Apple's push notifications, which use TLS 1.2 and which use client certificates to authenticate the user. And the problem here obviously is not that the endpoints are able to authenticate the user. The problem here is that any man in the middle, anybody intercepting or listening to the traffic is able to identify the user. Now, we always knew this is a problem with websites, with servers that, for example, SNI, the server name indicator, or the certificate can be used to identify the website I'm connecting to. That has been fixed in TLS 1.3, but yes, TLS 1.2, all of that data is unencrypted and as such subject to being intercepted. 
So since this is really a feature of the protocol, there isn't really much that can be patched here other than moving on and moving to TLS 1.3. I mentioned TLS 1.3 multiple times in the past. And of course, there are still a number of issues to get it further implemented. Well, uh, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. Also, thanks to everybody that I ran into at Sands Fire last week and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.